Hi, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live. My name is Eileen Minogue, and I'm the executive director for the Book Fairies. Uh, we are now three weeks into our readathon and have raised just over $50,000 for our mission. Um, tonight, I would like to spotlight, we have with us um, Investors Bank. We have Jennifer Smith, who's the Community Development Officer. They are one of our sponsors, and we're going to spotlight them today. Jennifer, welcome. How are Thank you? Thank you so much. So excited to be here. Thank you yes. so much, Christina. Thank you. And so, Lisa. And we also have Willie and Christina Geis. They're going to be Hello. Hello. Now, uh, investors, um, Willie and Christina, have been a huge supporter of ours. They've been, um, they've been with us since the very beginning. And Jennifer, if you want to speak a little bit about your um, sure. company's passion for our mission. Absolutely. Um, so we, uh, we were introduced to the Book Fairies by Therese Mora, our amazing branch manager in Merrick, who is a board member of the Book Fairies. And she has really inspired our whole Long Island team to become volunteers. We came to, um, to Wine Dance to help break the world record and um, our team <laughs> will never forget that experience. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, we're a community-based community bank. Um, we're headquartered in Short Hills, New Jersey. We really focus on our footprint, which is um, New Jersey, New York City and Long Island. And our team is really, really committed to community um, volunteer activities. And the Book Fairies has become one of our absolute favorite organizations to support. Um, so any, anytime you need us for more um, book, book laying, please let us know. We, we absolutely loved being there. I don't know if we'll do the <laughs> again. That was something, that was an undertaking. 30,000 books. Um, it was crazy. 3.81 miles of books in two different schools in, in like four hours. So I don't know that we'll do that again, but thank you we, so much. Thank you so much absolutely. for your, help and your support and your sponsorship for this event. We share um, your passion for yes, education and feel. we're so happy to support the readathon. Um, and thank you so much for having me today. We really. feel like you guys are like family to us. So thank you so much. Um, tonight, we're going to spotlight also uh, Christina and Willie Geist. They'll be joining us for a virtual story time. They'll be reading aloud from Christina's New York Times bestseller, Sorry Grownups, You Can't Go to School. Love the book. Um, she will share some of her author's secrets behind the making of the picture book. Christina is a brand strategist, entrepreneur, and author of two published picture books for children ages three to seven. Willie uh, Geist is the host of MSNBC's Morning Joe and Sunday's, uh, Sunday Today on NBC, and it's also an author. Um, the Geist met in homeroom, which I love, um, yes. on the first day of school in sixth grade. I could talk to you forever about that story. <laughs> that's a whole other show, but I love that. Um, and now you live in New York with your um, two children. We do. We do. Yes. Um, and we're so happy to be here with you all tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you to everybody at the Book Fairies. And um, we're just, we're thrilled to be here. Well, we're excited to have you here. And we're going to, uh, Jennifer and I are going to um, mute and turn off our uh, videos. And we're going to let you do uh, what you do best is reading your books. And then we'll, um, we'll share some questions with you later. And then I'll hop back on. Awesome. Sounds Thanks. good. Thanks. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And hello to all of our friends out there. We've missed you all all summer. Um, my name is Christina. I am the author of two books. One is called Buddy's Bedtime Battery. And the other is called Sorry Grownups, You Can't Go to School. And since many of us are getting ready to go back to school in some way, but it's going to be different really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. What do you think school is going to be like for some of our friends? Well, some of our friends are going to go back to school and sit in their classrooms with their teacher and their friends. That's right. But I think a lot of our other friends are going to be going to school just like this yeah. on their computer, looking at their teacher the way they're looking at you right now. That's right. So this is this book, Sorry Grownups, You Can't Go to School, came out in the good old days in 2019, a year ago when we were all going back to school just like normal. But now we're going back to school in all of these different ways. So we're going to read this silly story. And even though some of you are going to be going to school right here on the computer, you still have to remind mom and dad that when you're busy at school, 
and focused on your work and on your teacher that mom and dad can't come with you. It's just for kids. Right? And teachers. You need your own yeah. private time mm -hmm. with your teacher. Because mom and dad are going to want to come to school. You they want to come. They want to come. If it's at regular school, they want to come in the room and join you on the computer. Who wouldn't? Right. Yeah. Of course they do. It's school. It's the but best. Sorry. Sorry. You can't go to school. Okay. Um, so this book was written by me. It was illustrated by my good friend, Tim Bowers, who is, let's see, Tim. Oh, there he is. He's this guy. He's a grandpa. He lives in Ohio and he has illustrated, oh, I think close to 50 picture books at this point in his career. He has been drawing and painting since he was a little boy and he grew up and still drew and painted and made artwork all throughout his life. Mm -hmm. He even went to college and studied how to be an artist and you can do that too. So you can study to be a writer or you can study to be an artist or you can be both and you don't even have to study to do it. You can just write or make artwork at home right now, Yeah. right? You don't have to be a grown up. To Even do the that. kids watching can do that? Anybody can do it. Wow. You could do it too. Really? Yeah. Make my own book? You can. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, think about it, think about it. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Sorry, grown ups, you can't go to school. Mm. Are you gonna help me, Willie? I would love to I would love you. your help. Okay, okay, why don't I start? Let me Here's a picture you? of our friends at school. Yeah. I'll hold and then mm. I'll start and then you'll pick up. So okay. page by page. Got it. Okay. It seemed like any other school day, but as soon as Lady and her brother Buddy were dressed and eating breakfast at the kitchen table, things started to get a little weird. Hmm. Mm. What do you think is going to be weird, Willie? I don't know. He's just like any other morning. He's having his Robo brand cereal. Yeah. Everything looks normal to me. Big sister's ready for school. Yeah, he's yeah. ready to go. So I think Lady looks and Buddy good. are going to go to school in the classroom this year. Yeah. Right? Okay. So they look ready to go. Here we go. Uh oh. What is mom doing? Hmm. Good morning, says mom. Check out my new backpack. It has four zippers and a secret pocket. I am wearing it to school. Sorry, mommy. You can't go to school. Only kids and teachers. Only kids and teachers. Maybe I could look yeah, at that should backpack. mom have a new backpack? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Do moms get new backpacks? No, of course not. This mom is, hmm, well, let's just say, a little bit out there. Yeah, she thinks she's going. Uh-oh. Hey, yelled dad, check out my new high tops. I can tie them all by myself. I'm wearing them to school. Does this look like a good idea? Oh my gosh. I, I mean, like the sneakers, but- I was but gonna say, cool sneakers. Cool but high tops, but are we gonna let him go to school with these? So he got new high tops to go to school. Oh, but sorry, daddy. Sorry, daddy, you can't go to school. No. Only, Only kids, kids and, and teachers. teachers. Only kids and teachers. teachers. These grown-ups. No. Oh, oh my goodness. wow. Just then, the doorbell rang. Ding dong. It was grandma and grandpa and Bow Wow, and they were all wearing backpacks. Grandma what? and grandpa. Wait a minute. And puppy dog. What's oh, Bow Wow doing? What? Look at this. Grandma and grandpa and Bow Wow all wearing backpacks? Come on. I'll say it again, and maybe you want to say it with me, friends. Yeah, I think everybody's going to need to get used to saying this. We're seeing a pattern here. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah. Sorry, grown-ups, you can't go to school. Only kids and teachers. Only, Only kids, kids and, and teachers. teachers. Everybody wants in on the action. Yeah. No. This one you're not going to believe. Oh boy. Woof, 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 barked Bow Wow. Woof, 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 woof. He's excited, I can tell. Are we gonna let him go? 
I mean. No, no. Sorry, Bow Wow. You can't go to school either. Mm. Only, Only kids, kids and teachers. teachers. Only kids, kids and teachers. teachers. Sheesh. I mean, a lot of kids would like to take their dog to school. But, but come on. But, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, no. The rules are the happening. rules, guys. It's not happening. No, no. All right. I think we've gotten the point across. Do you That's think the grown ups are going to be okay with yeah, this? Yeah, they get it now. And they'll probably just relax now. And Understood, kids. We'll stay home. Let's let it see. go. All right. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Oh, my gosh. It's not fair. Yo, the grown ups, we want to go to morning meeting. Look at the grown ups. They're chasing oh, after it's them. It's not fair. Oh, look at them. Are they having a tantrum? It looks like it. Looks like they're close to having a tantrum. It's not fair. Oh, these poor grown-ups. They really want to go. We want to play ABC games. Oh my goodness. Are we going to let the grandpa do this? Are we going to let the grandpa play ABC games? No. Sorry, Jesus. grandpa. That's not for you. Hmm. And we want to read stories on the cozy carpet. Oh, look at mom. Look at mommy. Look at Mommy's her. dreaming about reading oh, stories. Oh, she's dreaming. She wants to read stories on the cozy carpet. Are we going to let her do it? No. Sorry, mom. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Personal. You're not a teacher, okay? Sorry, mom. This is not for you. Mm -hmm. Remember this page, everybody. We're going to come back in a minute and talk more about this page. So I want you to get a closer look. All right, sorry, mommy, sorry. We want to do science experiments, <laughs> said dad. Oh my gosh, does this look like a good idea? No, sorry, daddy. No, no way, dude. What's he up to? Up oh there? my gosh, what's he making? Some kind of slime. This, this looks like a disaster. Sorry, daddy. No, maybe you can go to the office or something or do some zooming. Yeah, he's making no, orange yeah. slime. This is That's not, this good. is a bad idea. Sorry, daddy. Oh, wow. We want to play with our friends at recess, says grandma. And look what she's doing. Oh my gosh, grandma. She's doing a cartwheel. I don't even know, what is she stand. doing? She's upside down and kicking the ball. Oh my goodness. With one hand. No, sorry, grandma. You're not going to go to recess. Sorry, no. I mean, we love you. We love you, but, but this is, not... these are all terrible ideas. Yeah, I don't know who would have put all these terrible ideas in a book. I could understand why they want to do all these things, because they're fun. Right, but, but it's just not how no. school works. And this looks dangerous, you know? I mean, pretty nimble, it looks yeah. fun, but no. Sorry, Grandma. So We're sorry, said Lady. It's just the way it is. Yes, yeah, said Buddy. Some things are for you and some things are for us. Right. It's just the way it is. Oh, but yeah. look at them. They're so disappointed. They the are. Yeah. They're disappointed. Sorry, grown ups. Yeah. You know what, grown ups? Some things just aren't for you. Yeah. But you can pick us up at the end of the day and you can even take us to the playground on the way home. The kids said to the grown-ups. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think everybody looks a little happier here. That seems like a good idea. Just pick us up back here and then we'll all be together again. That sounds good. Right? And we'll even tell you about school at family dinner tonight. Oh, huh. all right. This is looking better. Look at these guys. They're looking a little bit better here. Waving, smiling. And the good news is they're driving away. That's a good sign, right? That's a good sign. Okay, phew. All right, I think everybody's calmed down a little bit here. here. All right, but there's one more page. Hmm. Wait, what? Don't forget, tomorrow we get to go to work with you, the kid said to the grown-ups. Oh so my goodness. This. Tomorrow we get to go to work with you. Does this look like a good idea? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my goodness. Just when we thought we had everybody settled. Now look at this. Who would put all these crazy ideas in a book? 
what's lady doing she's got a coffee and a phone and buddy has those big shoes on and a tie this is crazy and a briefcase oh my gosh the end who would put these silly ideas in a book willie who would do that oh it was me yeah, it was me it was me. And where did I come up with the idea for this book? Sometimes people ask me that. Where did I come up with the idea for this book? This book was written in my imagination when our daughter Lucy was three years old and she was going to a little summer camp for toddlers out on Long Island mm -hmm. where the book fairies come from. And she was a little nervous about going to camp. And I started to just say around the house, Sorry, you can't go to camp to all the grownups and even to the dog. You cannot go to camp. Only Lucy can go to camp. And you know what she did? She went to camp and she reminded everybody that they could not come to camp and that camp was only for her. So later on that fall, when it was time to go to preschool, I tried to go to preschool. Mm. You know what she said? Sorry, mommy. No, mom, you can't come. No, perhaps. No. She no, probably no. told you kids and teachers only. Only kids and teachers. That's right. That's right. So this idea was in my life for a couple of years. And then when Lucy was five, when she was going to kindergarten, there she is here, when she was five and she went to kindergarten, I wrote it down and I wrote the story down. So it came to me when she was three. I wrote it down when she was five. It came out as a real book with the cover on it when she was 12. And now she is a teenager, 13. So it takes me a long time <laughs> to take an idea and make it all the way into a book. But the best part is I always get to share it with my friends and I always get to share it with you over and over again. And I get to share it with new friends and it never, it never gets old. Part it of the reason, never grows up. It always stays the same. Part of the reason it takes so long is because all of these pages are paintings. That's by right. By Mr. Tim Bowers. That's so right. It's not a picture. It's not a quick drawing. He does a painting on every page. That's right. That's how Tim illustrates the book. Sometimes my friends ask me about that, how the artwork gets made. Every page is a painting. And so I'll show you the first page of the book where buddies eating his cereal and pouring his cereal in the bowl. That started out as a sketch. Here's what it looked like first. It looked like a sketch. And first, Mr. Tim Bauer sketches every page with his pencil. And he uses a pencil because that way he can make changes. And then once he has it just right with his pencil, he then takes out his paintbrush and he paints every single page in his art studio in Ohio. And every page is a painting. And then all of the paintings get mailed to New York City and they get scanned into the computer and the words get added to the page. And then they get printed out on a huge printing machine and cut and put together and bound with a cover. So it's, not as simple as just taking out your crayon when you're making a book this way, but at home, you can take out your crayon mm -hmm. and you can make a book. You don't need all that fancy stuff. You don't need a big printing machine. You just need, what do you need to make a book? You need- a Piece of paper. Piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe a pencil. A pencil is good. Mm -hmm. And a crayon. A crayon. Or a box of crayons if you have one. Or markers yeah. or paints, anything you want to do. Yes. Um, but you're missing one big thing that you need and it lives up here. Is it an idea? An idea. Yeah, that's right. You need an idea for your story. And where could you find your ideas, Willie? In your life, the in world life. around you. In your life. I get my ideas from my own life from my kids. We have two kids. We have a daughter named Lucy. I told you about her. We also have a son named George. I got a lot of my ideas from being their mom. I also get ideas from their friends. And we lived in New York City when they were little and there were always kids on their scooters and in the playgrounds and moving all around New York City and in their classrooms and our nieces and nephews. We have 
how many nieces and nephews do we have? 10? 11. 11. Right? Because we have Russ and Billy. So there are 12 yeah. all together. Right. So that means we have 10 nieces and nephews. Yeah. Right. Okay. We have 10 nieces and nephews. You can see we're both writers, not mathematicians. I think I nailed it for the record the first time around. But I didn't. Well but you know that. what? Math wasn't my strong suit. But you, right. you turned out really well for you. I think Thank your you. friends might have some questions. Do for we you. have any questions yeah. from our friends? Let's yeah, see. They, okay. They do. Let's look. Oh, we hit. We have. Okay, hang on, just a sec. Here we go. Here in the chat. Did your kids have difficulty starting school when they were little? Yeah, school can be a little bit scary. That's right. School and yes. So sometimes you can feel a little nervous about going to school. Absolutely. I always feel a little bit nervous about going to school, even as a grown up, on that first day, because for us, if we're dropping off our kids at school, we feel a little bit nervous. And sometimes kids can feel a little bit nervous too. Everybody's a little bit nervous. You know what? Even the teachers. Even the teachers are a little bit nervous. So what I always try to do is remember that everybody feels that way. You're not the only one that feels that way. Everybody feels that way. And I always try to do something that changes my mood to something silly. I always try to make myself laugh. And when I make myself laugh, then everything else goes away, right? And that's one of the reasons why I wrote this story because it made me laugh and it made everything seem so silly. And when I would try to go to school, Lucy would turn to me and say, no, no, mom, that's ridiculous. You can't go to school. And it worked. We have another question. How do you keep story time and reading an important part of our mm. busy family schedule? That's a great question. Well, now our kids are 13 and 11. So they read a lot on their own but everybody in our family reads before they go to bed. So whether we're reading together, sometimes we still read stories together, or now if they wanna read on their own, we all read before we go to bed, including yeah. me. Um, and we are also so lucky to have so many nieces and nephews. How many was it? 10. 10. Um, and we love to read stories with them when they come to visit, especially if I'm working on a new story. I get to test it out on them. And that's always a lot of fun too. And I get a lot of my ideas from them. And also I think choosing great books that make your kids want to read. That's right. So that you're not saying you have to go read. The best part about being a parent is when you open that door and they're just sitting there reading by themselves because right. they want to read because they're lost in a great story and a great book. So having good books in your house, having book fairies in your life, who can get you good books. That's really important to yeah. surround them with books. That's right. Um, and okay, the next question is a lot of people always say they want to write a book. What inspired me to actually go through with it and write my first book? Well, thank you for asking. First of all, everybody is a writer. Everybody out there. Everyone has, what do you need? An idea. An idea. We all have ideas every day. We all do. And there's no, there's no big secret to writing a story. You just sit down and write it. That's all it takes. And sometimes I write them just for me. Sometimes I write something down just because I get a kick out of it. I don't really expect it to go all the way to a book. I just enjoy writing it. Maybe I'll just read it to my friends and that's enough. So I would say, just do it, just write it down. Um, I like to write and, and plan out my pages. So picture books like this, this type of picture book, they're 40 pages long. So when I write my story, I plan out my 40 pages and I know exactly what's gonna happen on each one. And that's a way that helps me get my idea down on paper. And then I just read it. I read it sometimes without even having any pictures. And my friends still can imagine the pictures on their own and we always have fun, even if it's not all fancy like this. Just take a plain piece of paper and do it. You don't You've need to wait for many? anything. Oh, I've, I've written, I would Tons. say, yeah, I mean, I would say I probably have like 15 to 20 manuscripts right now for picture books. And then I have a lot of other ideas that are just dancing around up here. And sometimes I take, I have time to write them down. Sometimes they dance around for a while and then maybe they dance away, but they're fun for, they're fun while they're there. Um, so I encourage everybody to just write it down. Just do it. Um, 
What was your first thought when you heard you had a number one best-selling book? Oh, Willie can comment well, on this. The this question last in summer. said, you heard you had a number one best-selling book that beat out Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, for, for a moment, it for a moment. Was, it was a best-selling book, that is true. But I on Amazon, it was number one for a full day or two, but number one overall. Yeah. And it was beating three Harry Potter books after it. So I quickly on Amazon did a screen grab <laughs> and framed it. So we have that up. So even if it was for one day <laughs> to see Christina's book at number one, and then it might have been four, the rest of the list basically was Harry Potter books. Yeah. And there she was sitting on top of J.K. Rowling's universe. That was for pretty a day. crazy. But it was a big bestseller. And I'm very proud of Christina because you write a book you don't know, it's a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, it takes a long time to get painted and to get out, and you don't know how people are gonna respond. You don't know what people are gonna think of it. Yeah. And people have loved both of her books, and there's a third one on the way that there also is. will beat Harry Potter at least for an hour or a day. We'll see. That's a guarantee. We'll me, see, not we'll see. Yeah. And I think originally when I thought to myself, wouldn't it be fun to have a real book in a bookstore? Like, wouldn't that be amazing? Or in a library, in someone's library at home or in a library, wouldn't that be amazing? So that was really my goal was to just see, could I get that done? And then the bestseller part of it, um, and with, with Sorry Grown Ups, it made the New York Times bestseller list, which was really bananas. Um, and that's a moment where you really stop and just feel grateful because what it means to me is that more of my friends are going to share that story. So the reason you write a story is to share it. You don't write it to be a bestseller and sit up on a shelf and look pretty. You write it so that you can share it and you can read it. And picture books are meant to be read and they're meant to be read out loud to a little person and you have a laugh and you have a fun memory together. So I just look at my books as a ticket for me to be able to do that. And that's where the real fun comes through. So um, I'll read the last one. The question is, Christina, does Willie give you ideas for your stories? Not even one, <laughs> none. <laughs> Christina's brain is so much more creative and so much faster than mine that she comes out of her office. She's like, I wrote 10 books this weekend. <laughs> So no, I'd give her no ideas whatsoever for her story. <laughs> She's so much more talented and better at it than I am that she doesn't need my help. Well, you were very supportive, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, t I tend to just kind of, they come and dance around in my head and then when they're ready to be written down, yeah. that's, when they, that's when they make it out. But you are a very enthusiastic listener and reader. So thank I'm you. a fan, I'm a fan. <laughs> thank you. We're fans too, we're fans too. You guys are so entertaining and it's clearly, um, it's palpable why you guys are together since sixth grade. It's <laughs> evident how cute you are together and entertaining as well. Um, I love so much of what you were saying and, and you're speaking about wanting to get your books in a library and what you're doing today is helping us to fill libraries that don't have enough books in them, to get house, uh, books into homes that don't have any, to let moms be, and dads be able to create story times for kids with books in their hands. And for that, we're so grateful. Um, we, have, we struggle every day to make sure that we're fighting to level the playing field so that kids in lower income areas um, have the same uh, opportunities as their peers in middle income areas. And that's really what you're doing here today. You're helping us to raise awareness and to raise funds for our mission so that we can continue to get these books in these hands and, and just give the kids the opportunity that they deserve. Um, we always say reading is essential and it's as simple as starting with a book. And there's nothing like that, holding that book in their hand and having your kid with you and being able to read. So we're so grateful for your time and your support and um, we, uh, just gratitude. That's all we could say, just gratitude for everything that you're doing for us. Well, thank you. I mean, it's an honor to do this. We've been talking a lot during this pandemic about how the world's problems seem so big and how to even get your arms around it. And what we decided is you just try to, you can't save the whole world, but you can try to save your world. And I think that's exactly what you guys do there, which is, it's a big problem that's happening, not just on Long Island or just in New York or in America, it's around the world. And you guys are solving the problem where you live. And now, as I understand it, even in other countries as well, in Africa. So you guys are amazing. And we're just grateful to be a small part of this today. Thank you. 
listen, we're changing children's stories one book at a time. Yeah. And that's all you can do. We say chip away one little thing at a time. And, and that's what our books do. And we are changing the trajectory of children's lives. And, um, and that has re repercussions down the road for all of us. And it's in, and and keeps kids off welfare and keeps them out of jail and gives them the hope that every child should have. So, we're so grateful. Uh, we hope that you'll come back next year. We're going to do this again next year. Absolutely, we're in. absolutely. <laughs> so much. Well, thank you so much. We're going to stop now and say good night to everybody, and we'll see you soon. Good night. Okay. Thanks, thank guys. you so much to the book fairies. We love you all. Thank you. Thank you.